This week on Inside Boulder News, a proposed temporary sales tax could result in several cultural and safety improvements across the city. The main branch of the Boulder Public Library opens a new teen tech lab, and the USA Pro Challenge returns to Boulder on August 24th. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Ashley Prill. Your vote this November could have a significant impact on cultural projects and safety improvements across the city. A proposed 0.3% sales tax would raise approximately $28 million over three years for short-term capital projects like lighting on University Hill, Chautauqua, and Boulder Creek. This temporary sales tax is different than the capital bond programs the city has frequently used in the past. There's some projects that are very, very large and that makes sense to bond because they'll last 30 years, 40 years. But some of these projects can be done in a much shorter period of time and you, if you could pay them off quicker. And some people call it pay as you go. It's you, you collect money and then you pay for the project as you have the money. So it's a very short term. Uh, it's for projects that can be done in that three to five year period. People can see what's been done with their money. And if they're happy with that, then they can say, well, we might want to try that again in the future. So it's, it's different than we've done in the past. If passed, a portion of the tax would be used to create an event street on University Hill. The hill doesn't have a good defined place for community cultural activities. So one creative idea that we're looking at is taking Pennsylvania Avenue and turning it into what we call a people place, that the street becomes an outdoor gathering space. Even though cars will be allowed, they will be slower. Uh, the pedestrians and bikes will be the primary uh, occupants of that space. Revenue from the proposed tax would also go towards renovating the Dairy Center for the Arts. The Dairy Center actually hosts about 200,000 experiences, arts experiences per year. And we have three performance theaters an art cinema, three art galleries, uh, 25 music studios, three dance studios, almost 2,500 music and dance students. So we're one of Boulder's largest educational institutions, which a lot of people don't realize. We actually have an entire renovation plan already planned and on the drawing board and just ready to put shovels in the ground. And it will include remodeling our theaters, changing one of them into a black box, uh, expanding one of them and making it technologically advanced, but most importantly, soundproofing our theaters. This is an old dairy and the walls were never soundproofed, which is a problem for performers and audiences alike. It would involve remodeling our dressing room so that we can have traveling uh, shows here. It would involve changing our lobby and making it a better meeting place. And it's um, a huge project which would make the Dairy Center truly competitive with other art centers in neighboring communities such as Arvada and Fort Collins. Right now, the tax rate for the city is 3.56%. The proposed tax would add three-tenths of a cent, bringing the rate up to 3.86%. If passed in November, the tax would become effective on January 1, 2015 and end on December 31, 2017. Another proposed ballot item would allow City Council to meet an executive session to get legal advice and discuss legal strategies surrounding municipalization. Executive session is when the public has noticed the Council is meeting in private on a specific topic for a defined period of time. The only time that this uh, measure, if passed, uh, would allow an executive session is if you're going into an attorney, if you're going into a meeting for the purpose of obtaining legal advice and or discussing legal advice. And so, for example, right now, <coughs> um, the city attorney can have confidential communications with me or with another council member uh, yeah, up to two at a time. And that's happening, and it's happening with respect to the municipalization issue. Um, th those meetings are secret, and, um, and the public can't attend them, and there's a reason for that, because the law protects uh, the ability for an attorney to talk to the client and vice versa for the purpose of obtaining legal advice, and that's important in legal strategy and all. It, it, actually, those one-on-one -on -one meetings work fine in a traditional setting, but here in this complex matter where there's multiple lawsuits going on, uh, where there are possible negotiations with uh, Excel, you know, the, the communications with a lawyer are complex, and you know, council members want the benefit of hearing the questions that the other council members ask the city attorney. Uh, and right now they can't do that. And they also want the benefit of hearing the response that the city attorney gives. And of course each council member also wants to make sure that the facts that each other council member is giving the lawyer, they have the same view of the facts. And if not, they want to provide the city attorney with, hey, 
I think the facts are a little different than that. And so it actually allows for a much more deliberative process and it's not making anything secret that wouldn't already be secret. The proposal also includes a way for the public to make sure executive sessions are being used for the purpose of legal advice and strategy. The best check here is something we're doing, again, we've proposed in Boulder that's not required under state law, and that is we're actually recording the attorney-client communications. So if at any time someone challenges that in court, a judge can actually listen to the tape and say, you know what, these guys aren't talking about what the executive session law permits. Therefore, I'm going to release uh, these tapes. Watch the August 5th City Council meeting where all of the potential ballot items were discussed on boulderchannel8.com. City Council will finalize the ballot language by August 19th. The main branch of the Boulder Public Library opened the Foundry, a new technology lab for teens, last week. Thanks to a $10,000 grant from the Library Foundation, teens have access to top-of-the-line technology equipment. We've got two iMac computers, we've got uh, video equipment, uh, audio equipment for making music, and the software to go along with it to make all the edits so the kids can be cr as creative as they want to be. We have a 3D printer, which we're extremely excited about. We've got some circuit boards over here so kids can figure out how to make a fan work. So it's just basically trying to get technology into the hands of kids and getting them excited about it. 14-year-old Daniel Delaney made a video using the foundry equipment that premiered at the grand opening. I I think I couldn't get a hold of any better equipment anywhere else over at my old middle school. They had um, some equipment for the video production and this is even better than that equipment. So it's, it's the most top-notch equipment that you can get. All of the video equipment, the green screen, the DSLR camera, um, I think it's going to come together really, really great to make for some people to make some awesome videos. For now, the Foundry is only open to teens entering 6th grade through 12th grade. For more information, log on to teens.boulderlibrary.org. Last week, Boulder Energy Challenge finalists pitched innovative solutions for reducing greenhouse gas emissions to the community and a panel of judges in an effort to get funding for their projects. The Boulder Energy Challenge is a new grant program designed to foster energy efficiency and renewable energy development ideas. So one of the exciting projects is that Boulder Housing Partners is working with a team of people to really work on energy consumption in the city's uh, affordable housing. And so these are units where they don't pay the energy bill, and so how do we really work with residents to uh, really make energy visible to them and change behavior, which is something totally innovative. Superior Ecotech is a company that proposed a project that they are going to put a thousand square foot uh, algae greenhouse on the roof of Upslope Brewery that will capture all the clean CO2 that's actually emitted from the brewing process and part of that algae end product is omega-3 oils that the, then they'll be able to market um, to different partners. Snug Home is a local energy efficiency company it has been around for a while but they developed a new model for how to bundle a solar PV and electric car and energy efficiency measures in a home and have that all be paid for um, via financing with the same monthly payments as you're making on you know, your regular car and electric bills now. And so they're going to be developing this tool and a whole way to put it all together, a one-stop shop to go out to consumers and say, look at what you can do if you bundle these things together. So the Boulder Energy Challenge, we decided to go after this, basically extending our software platform to the next level, uh, really taking the business to uh, also incorporate solar systems and uh, electric cars. And by bundling all three of those things, we really found out some magic that bringing it all together makes it pay for itself so much faster than energy efficiency would do by itself or solar by itself. Uh, the electric car really makes it sing, and it all complements each other in a really great way. Each funded project will last for a year and will be tracked on boulderenergychallenge.com. You can find project descriptions and contact information for all six finalists on the website as well. The USA Pro Challenge rolls into Boulder on Sunday, August 24th. About 160 cyclists will start the last leg of a week-long race on 18th and Pearl and then make their way to the finish line in Denver. This will be our second time to actually be involved in the actual event. We did it um, in 2012. This will be a little bit smaller um, footprint, but um, still very exciting. Uh, an opportunity to meet uh, some of the uh, racers and riders uh, on Pearl Street. And then also a uh, wonderful kids challenge which will uh, incorporate 
family friendly activities for, um, for all ages to come out and experience the same start uh, area for them to actually get on and experience uh, as, a, as a young kid. Kids from 11 years old down to like little kids with striders and uh, whoever can ride, you know, get on wheels and go. So we'll have different age groups. Um, it's not a race, it's a ride. And uh, we'll use the same course, part of the same course. And we'll use the start area um, and use the stage and the announcing and um, it'll be a, a big deal for kids. So we do have a couple of road closures for, um, for Saturday and Sunday. There's going to be a small section on Saturday that closes at 4 o'clock and that'll be on Pearl Street between 17th and 19th and that'll close at 4 o'clock. Um, there'll be another closure that'll happen on Sunday um, and that will be the extension of uh, 19th through Folsom um, and that will be through about 12.30 um, or about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then we'll have um, the actual uh, loop itself that the riders are actually on. Pros are expected to take off from 18th and Pearl around noon and the Kids Challenge will begin at 12.50. To register for the Kids Challenge or to see the full event schedule, visit usaproboulder.com. For road closures and traffic impacts, log on to boulderconezones.net. Starting Saturday, August 16th, Arapahoe Avenue will reopen to both directions of traffic between Folsom and 15th Streets. The old asphalt roadway has been replaced with concrete and is expected to remain in good condition for more than 30 years. Sidewalk construction, landscaping, and other finished work will continue until the final phase of the project is completed in the fall. For the latest construction and traffic information, visit boulderconezones.net. Thank you for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to BoulderChannel8.com and click on subscribe.